All right, everyone. Thanks for coming on down to our social work and criminology and addictions uh, information sessions that we have here. Uh, there's a lot to go about. Um, so we'll just jump right into it, to be honest with you. So starting on out, uh, this is just a quick agenda that you can kind of see here. Um, like I said, this one's a little bit different because the social work program is primarily a University of Regina program. Now USASC does support it as the St. Peter's College, but just so you're aware, when you do graduate, even if you spend your entire time in Munster and at Saskatoon, you will actually end up with a degree from the University of Regina here. So just so you are aware. Um, Starting off with who I am here, my name is Matthew Waszkowski. I am part of the student services team at St. Peter's College, along with Crystal Shutko. We work with students to begin their USAS degree, and as such, we work regularly with USASC to ensure you are transitioning properly and are set up for success. Uh, when it comes to social work, we do work closely with you, Regina, as well. We are affiliated with the University of Saskatchewan. So, but just be aware, I'm not an official represent, uh, representative uh, of the College of Arts and Science or from the University of Regina. Again, we work really closely with them. So we're, we're, we're quite in tune with um, what they offer and like the steps that students need to take. So starting right off in the social work here why do students choose to start uh well study social work but not only that why do they also choose to study it at st peter's college and at the university of saskatchewan and um a big reason people really like starting it here is because of the uh combined ccap that's the criminology Cert uh, certificate in criminology and addictions um is what ccap kind of stands for there um, you get all people like being a social worker because you get you get a lot of direct work with people like they, uh, they, they really feel like they're making a difference you know it, it's hands on really you're working with someone you're not developing some policy at a computer which while yes it might benefit people you get to actually see the tangible results here um, yourself uh, it's involvement in your community there's a there's a bunch of different areas you can go in here as we go into the job market here. Um, so you can really focus in on your, your passion area there. Um, you do have a choice between studying in, in Regina or Saskatoon. Prince Albert is also an option there as well. Um, I'm, I'm more knowledgeable when it comes to Regina or Saskatoon. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on here. You can complete your pre-professional years at St. Peter's College or at U of R or at U of S. Um, or really at a, at a number of... Uh, uh, off campus uh, locations. And the well, pre COVID, there was a predicted fair job market growth um, by the government of Saskatchewan and by the government of Canada. So uh, it was deemed to be a growing field for sure, with a good number of jobs opening up here within the next three years. <clears throat> um, so going into the just the job market here, um, some common fields here, I won't read them all out here, but those are just common fields that people go into. Uh, I'm going to overwhelm you with text next slide as well. Um, but those are just some common categories that social workers typically will find themselves working in within Saskatchewan. Uh, going on to the real numbers here, these numbers are from the Regina Moose Jaw area. So any social worker in the Regina to Moose Jaw area, that's where I got these numbers from. Um, come directly from the government of Saskatchewan. So 33% of social workers are working uh, in a nursing or residential care facilities and social assistance. So one in three, almost a third of them are working in healthcare services and hospitals. 18% of them are working with provincial and territorial public administration. Uh, and then 8% of them are working for educational services. So some type of a, a school there. Um, I see a couple other people joined here a little bit later. This will be available up on our website, just so you are aware. So you will be able to watch the recording of this. Um, again, overwhelming you with text here. This is just some examples of jobs you can actually do with this program within uh, Saskatchewan. This comes directly from the University of Regina. Um, <laughs> I, I won't read them out. There's too many of them, but there's a lot of jobs. So there's, it's a very wide and diverse field here. Um, you do gain a lot of skills and it does give you the opportunity to follow your, your passion. Um, everyone or most people, when they go into social work, have some type of area that they're at least a little bit more interested in. And when they come out of social work, they'll definitely have developed and fostered those interests quite a bit more. Going on to this criminology and addictions certificate here. So why do students uh, like to start studying it? Well, it's pretty easy to combine with other degrees. So what I mean by that is 
normally if you do a bachelor degree, you do four years, uh, you know, 10 classes each year. Um, and poof, you get your piece of paper after four years. With the CCAP certificates, criminology and addictions, you can get, you know, you, you get extra qualifications. You're not spending any additional money. You're not having to take any additional classes. Most people just choose to use some of their electives with this. And a lot of programs actually meet at least some of the requirements anyways. Um, just as some general class requirements. So it get, does get pretty easy to combine with a lot of degrees. I'll show you some co more commonly paired ones, but I've seen quite a few different ones. I've seen very, uh, <laughs> very different um, parents for sure. There is a practicum experience, a six week practicum experience. Uh, it is the only uh, program uh, so it's quite unique. It's the only program that studies both criminology and addictions within the province. Um, there are, of course, programs, certificates, diplomas, and, and degrees that study one or the other. This is one that studies both of them. And people can choose to study full-time or part-time. Um, what this actually is, is you'll study stuff like crime and criminology theories. You'll be introduced to core sociological concepts. You'll learn about addictions. Uh, it'll mostly focus, to be honest, on uh, alcohol and illicit drug use. Um, you will study the correctional system and examine key positions and principles involved in like custody, punishment, rehabilitation, uh, topics such as that. Some common careers that people can do with this, um, you know, so there's working as a parole or probation officer, correction officer. Um, I'll, I'll let you read through that. But as you can kind of see, you're working with um, particularly people who might have some type of, a, you know, a troubled background, um, youth, uh, especially quite common there as well. Um, one thing I really want to highlight here, though, you know, it's a criminology and addiction certificate, but you can't actually become a licensed um, addictions officer. You cannot become a licensed addiction officer with just this. You need at least a diploma to be able to do that. This is a certificate. So I just want to highlight that difference. Um, basically, this gives you a really nice foundation to either build upon towards further education or to get some good insights into, um, you know, just, just some of the key information that people might be, so some of the key um, troubles that some people might be facing within the province. Some commonly paired degrees. Most of our students who take this program do pair it with a degree. Uh, you can do a bachelor in sociology. There's uh, indigenous studies, history, political studies, psychology, both arts and science. And of course, social work. Um, it pairs quite well in the social work. Uh, again, those are just common ones. There's a lot more that you can do it with. It really just depends on how you want to allocate your electives. But those ones are more common just because they're in a somewhat similar field. Um, and you have to take some of these classes regardless in these areas. So just some things to kind of know here in your first year. Um, with social work specifically, again, you can start this at USAS, St. Peter's College, or University of Regina, your, your first year of pre-social work. Um, you can double or triple your scholarship pool. This is a big reason why we recommend people um, start with U of S uh, or St. Peter's College is because you could, if you do things right and things work out well for you and you're lucky, you could potentially dip into the St. Peter's College scholarship pool, which is massive per capita. Uh, I think it's the biggest one in the province. Um, into USAS massive scholarship pool or to U, U Regina's massive scholarship pool. So we have had students who've been able to win awards in all three of them, just so you're aware. One thing we really recommend that students kind of figure out here, um, particularly before January in their first year is where they think they want to study the remainder of the program. Um, at the very minimum, you have to spend two years in Saskatoon or Regina um, for the social work program. So it's a really good idea to kind of narrow that down right off the bat. You should be aiming for a 70% average as a minimum. Higher is, of course, better. Um, you will want to get active with work and volunteering. We'll go into that one next year. Uh, you will want to apply for this program. So when you, you apply, like in U of S, you'd be arts and science. Uh, at U of R, you'd be, well, yeah, arts, uh, faculty of arts or science, something like that. Um, you do have to apply to this by January 15th. Uh, that is when the deadline for social work does end every single year is January 15th. We do recommend that you apply in term one. Uh, it's just, it's just easier. It, it, you know, it's just nicer to get ahead there. Um, and that's the official recommendation from the university of Regina as well. If you do want to take CCAP, the criminology and addictions and certificate uh, addictions, um, you must complete some year to USAS classes. So you must go to Saskatoon, um, at the very least for that second year for a little bit. Um, 
it, be aware it may take up to three months for a course transfer to be uh, processed. Now that said, you know, there's a, there's like pre-social work classes you have to take. Don't worry. Those will transfer. It's more so if there's a class they haven't seen before. Um, but U of R and U of S work really closely. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. If you have any more questions with that, I can gladly help out. Um, oops. Sorry about that folks. Um, going on to the criminology and addictions here. Uh, actually before that, before that, actually, no, I'm going to, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to jump right into this. So criminology addictions. There is a six-week internship during the spring semester. Just so you're aware, you will be doing an internship. So don't plan to work during those six months or, or six weeks, at least not full-time. Uh, you must complete some of these classes with the University of Saskatchewan. We don't offer every single class to complete the program. So there's a couple of, uh, there's like one or two 200 and 300 level classes that you will have to do with the University of Saskatchewan. So whether that's you drive in or you're living there or sometimes they're online, uh, but just so you're aware about that. You must officially apply for this in your first year. When you first start, you're in the College of Arts and Science and then you can officially apply for it. Uh, and to actually apply for this, uh, you need a resume, an educational transcript. Uh, you'll need two references, one of whom is academic, uh, one of whom is just general a letter of intent outlining your goals and objectives. Like, so what are you hoping to accomplish with this? Where would you like to complete your practicum? Um, and just a timeline of completion, just so you're aware about that. Um, getting on to admissions into social work as a pre-social work student, um, you can apply at the end of your first year, or rather, I guess, within your first year, you'll need at least 30 credit units. So that's a full load of classes by April 30th to apply. Um, the U of R courses are up on there. Those are some mandatory classes in English and did a psychology, a sociology, and a social work. Um, there's U of S equivalents to that. So don't worry about that. It's never been a problem for students uh, before. The rest of that can be electives. Um, but that said, they do have a list of general university studies that you can take. Um, you can take up to two years of pre-social work. So if you don't want to apply in that first year or you wanna to go to that, uh, that CCAP program, um, or if you don't get in on your first attempt, you can apply second year and still graduate on time, just so you're aware. And again, you can complete this, this pre-social work at you know, you, Regina, Saskatoon or here. How they kind of base your admissions with this, um, normally U of S, uh, they, they do offer a lot of entry statistics. So I can kind of tell you exactly what you need to be. Um, U of R, as far as I'm aware, doesn't actually release those. So their official uh, breakdown, I guess, is that they base their admission decisions on the completion of your classes. So of course you need those classes done. Um, assessment of details related to your work, um, volunteer and community experiences, a personal state uh, statement, and then your marks. So what they're really kind of looking for here, um, on top of, you know, are you, are you an okay student, but they're also looking for stuff like, they're going to be assessing stuff like writing skills, critical thought, self-awareness, ethics, and values. Um, something that, some advice I have for you here, and this does come directly from the U of R, is uh, when you're going, when you're, you know, putting your letter of intent, when you're talking about your interview, some skills that they're looking for, and that will be quite transferable to the field of social work are going to be things like uh, communication, advocacy, conflict resolution, active listening, critical thinking, setting boundaries, empathy, stuff like that. So they're looking for those skills. And if you, the more you can forecast that you have those skills, um, that you have experience in those areas, uh, the better your chance of admissions is going to be. I would recommend applying in your first year, see what happens. And then if you don't get in, you can improve and try again next year and still graduate on time. Um, because there's a couple different campuses you can complete years two, three, and four in. One thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this quite broad here to be completely honest with you, but I will say this, there are two practical placements that you will do in years three and years four. Uh, one of them is a 15, 16 week one, is a 16 week one. So it's a full time, um, practicum placement. You can study in Saskatoon or Regina. Uh, both these campuses do have a social work student society, although Regina's is quite a bit larger. Um, and there will be volunteer opportunities within the program available to you. Um, you don't have to volunteer, but typically what we kind of find is that people who go into social work, again, they have some type of area that they're really interested in, that they're actively pursuing, trying to make the, you know, their community or their uh, or a specific set of people um, have better conditions. Going on into admissions to quote unquote pre-social work. Uh, 
I won't give you the U of R entries admissions, but I can just, you know, name off the top of my head here. Um, going into U of S, what you see here is U of S. Um, you can basically be admitted to the College of Arts and Science. You need a 70% average. I'll show you that breakdown in just a second here. And you need some type of a grade 12 math. That can be foundations, uh, it can be workplace, and it can be pre-calc or calc 30 as well. And you can be admitted with a deficit, just so you are aware. So if you didn't get that, don't worry. There are, uh, there are opportunities to kind of address that. Um, going on to those grades here, like I said, uh, you want a 70% for the U of S. Um, they don't look at all your classes. So I'm sorry to your gym teacher. Gym does not count here, um, but does count though, are things like you need A math, A grade 12 math, A grade 12 English. And then they pick three uh, classes between sciences, social sciences, uh, and fine and performing arts. So I don't worry too much about it. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about being admitted into it. If you do have any concerns, feel free to talk to me afterwards and I'll be happy to help out with that. Going on to the U of R admissions. Um, it's pretty much the exact same stuff to be completely honest. It's basically the exact same things that you see here. Um, the only difference is instead of a 70%, uh, you will need a minimum of a 65%. Um, and you can apply for the U of S by August 15th. Uh, again, earlier typically tends to be a little bit better here though. Going on to tuition here. Um, I'll tell you the actual social work tuition here in a second, but going on with the University of Saskatchewan, again, if you're doing pre-social work, you'll be in arts and science, um, or at least you probably will be in arts and science. What The numbers that you see there are very much estimates. It very much depends on wh what the number of classes you take, uh, which classes you take, um, and it, whether this is going to be in the fall and the winter and like whether you opt out uh, of like certain plans and, and student fees and whatnot, that's probably the highest you'll see. Uh, a lot of people do start off with like, you know, instead of like taking 30 credits, they'll take like 24 credits or something like that. So that number would go down considerably. With St. Peter's College, our tuition is quite similar. It's basically the exact same. I think it's like, you know, one or 2% cheaper. Go, go to Boston Pizza, buy a burger and, and boom, you're even. Um, the one di big difference though, is that our tuition, or sorry, our fees are quite a bit lower. Our fees are about approximately a third of the cost of the U of, uh, U of S. Um, and you know, the reason for that's pretty simple. We don't have a bus plan out here. We don't have like a student newspaper. So of course your fees are a little bit lower. Um, we do find that our students do complete years one and two with less debt in comparison to the rest of the province, which, you know, makes sense when you consider that our tuitions, uh, similar to U of S, which does offer quite low tuition, uh, when you look at other provincial institutions, but our fees are quite a bit lower and we have a lot of additional scholarship opportunities for our students on top of the great opportunities University of Saskatchewan offers. And again, if you're a pre-social work student, you might be able to even look into the U of R scholarships here as well. So you could triple the, those scholarship pools here if you do this right and if you get lucky. Um, in terms of the social work tuition, so again, social work is the U of R. Um, whether you're in Saskatoon or Regina, this should be approximately uh, $7,500 per, uh, per year plus fees. And again, that's assuming you're a full-time student. It will change a little bit depending on which classes you take and the order you take your classes. But that's that's around the estimate is $7,500 per year. Um, going on to why students choose St. Peter's College here. Um, pretty small class sizes, uh, average class size of 16 people. Uh, so that's much nicer than, you know, the average class size of like three or 400 that uh, you might see on some bigger campuses. Uh, quite, again, our students report that they graduate with a lot less debt, which makes sense because on average, our students who apply for our scholarships get an additional $1,800 in scholarships. They get to keep their USAS scholarships. There's a similar tuition, lower student fees. Uh, they do report that it is it's a quite a friendly environment here. Um, and that's just because, you know, we're a smaller institution, so we're able to actually have a person helping you. It's not a press one to talk to this person, press two to talk to this person. We do find that our students typically do have quite a low dropout rate when we compare it to the provincial and national average, which makes quite a bit of sense. You know, it's, you know, it's an average, it's a smaller class size. Um, there's someone who's working with you and it's less expensive. Yeah, that kind of makes sense there. Um, and we do offer 70 plus programs that you can start your first year in here. 
Um, if you want some more information, I'll bring that, I'll come back to this in just one second. So I'm just going to hold off on this. Uh, if you do want to learn more about social work though, U of R is hosting a, uh, an information night for people who are interested in this, that, you know, they're the experts with this. They will know more than social work than I will. Um, there's just two hours instead of 20 minutes. So there'll be a lot more in-depth information. I do recommend that you go into that to sign up online and receive the particip participation link. Um, you just go to uregina.ca slash social work slash events. Uh, if you just Googled social work information nights, uh, November 19th, I'm sure you'll find something too. It will be an online Zoom event as well. So similar to this one. And then St. Peter's College has an open house coming up here on November 21st at 1 p.m. So that one is around uh, two, or I think it's about two hours long. This one is registration required. Um, COVID-19 guideline, COVID guidelines are being followed. So yes, it is in person, uh, but that doesn't just mean you can saunter on in. You do need to register. There is a, there is a capacity limit. If we, we, we will not be exceeding that. So basically whoever first registers is the one who gets that spot. Um, and there's a couple of other guidelines there as well. So you can register for that on our website. Just go to stpeterscollege.ca, click open house. You'll be good to go. Going on to how to get in touch with us, uh, a couple of different ways. We have a Facebook and Instagram, a Twitter. We also have a YouTube. You can also call us, number at the bottom, email us, number at the bottom, or visit our website. Um, and there's a couple of contact forms on there, even just to explore additional information. Um, and again, a couple more people joined midway through here. This, the recording of this will be available for you on our website, stpeterscollege.ca, and then just go to events and under info sessions, and you'll see them there. Um, but that's all I have for you here. So if you guys do have any questions, um, you know, feel free to get in touch with us with any one of those channels that you see there. But otherwise, I do thank you for attending this event. And if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. We'd be happy to help out. Have yourselves a good day, everyone. Enjoy the holidays.